Hello everyone, Scott and Jennifer. Scott, are you ready to talk about how to look good in Zoom today? I am, and I don't want to do it just in one episode because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to looking good on Zoom. So I thought, why not two? Let's okay. do two. So what are we going okay. to cover today? Today, we are going to cover our webcam placement, so how to look good on video. And then also, Scott, I'd love if you would talk with us more about lighting and how to really enhance our lighting. Gladly. Ooh, let's do that. Well, I'll start. I'll kick us off. Let's talk about our webcam placement. So over the last six months, you've probably seen some interesting views on video. Scott, I'm going to have you demonstrate. Are you okay with that? Yeah? Okay. Scott, can you demonstrate what it looks like when we have to look up someone's nose? <laughs> ah, how many of you have seen this shot way too often? <laughs> and Scott, if you adjust your camera up even a little bit more, you can see above Scott's head is a fan. Well, a lot of folks will have their fan on. So not only are you looking up Scott's nose, you're gonna get the rotation of a fan at the same time. So everything is just a huge distraction. This is not how we wanna show up. Scott, another comment, ooh, you turned it on. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect example. Okay, Scott, can you also show us another common view we're seeing on video? And that is when we're, our entire body is cut off. All we're looking at is the head of the person. And we can end up just looking like a bobbing, talking head. Not very attractive, Scott. It's not your best look. Okay, so what do we do? How do we position our webcam so that we make it easier for our audience to view us and there's less distraction? Well, here's the key. I'm gonna make this super simple for us. You wanna raise your webcam to about two inches above your eye level. So whatever it takes to make that happen, whether it's books under your laptop, boxes or a laptop stand, whatever it takes to get the webcam raised about two inches, that is an ideal spot. Now, that's only the first part. Don't forget the second part, which is you want to grab the top of your monitor and you want to tilt it toward you about two inches. And here's why. When you tilt it toward you, that's going to give your audience more of a view of your upper body and your hands and your arms. Yep, Scott, hands and arms. And then it also is a more flattering view at that angle, which we can all use in virtual. Yeah, and so can I add... Above. Yes. Can I add two things, Jennifer? Please. One is there's this photographic principle called the rule of thirds, which I like to use as a guide for my eyes. The, the rule of thirds is this thing where you divide the frame into thirds from top to bottom and from left to right. But when it comes to eye placement, it's you want to get your eyes around that top third line roughly. That'll help a little bit in trying to figure out just how far away to get from the cam and, and how to angle it. And one last thing I think is important for every, everybody to know is that it's a good idea to provide a little bit of headroom so that your head's not touching. Because if you watch what happens here, if I'm talking like this, if there's this funny thing that happens from the viewer's point of view. It just does not look right. Yeah, I can start cutting off the top of your head. So here's the best, here's the best advice that I can give around this. And I'm constantly doing this. Scott, I have a feeling you might be too. Go into a Zoom room or whatever your platform is that you use. Get in there by yourself, turn your video on and just start playing with this. It's not about perfection. It's about being intentional with it. So get in that room, start putting some boxes and books under your laptop and get a, get a feel for the difference when we are able to show more of ourselves and have that better angle. All right. Good so stuff. that's <laughs> cam placement, right? The, oh, webcam placement? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
webcam placement and framing. Let's go into lighting now. And, and to demonstrate this, I am going to dim the lights. And because I'm an aging person, I've got my clapper. So I'll just dim the lights with my clapper. All right, some movie magic for our viewers. We are super dorks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> our, our high budget production here with special effects and everything. <laughs> now, you see that things are darker in here. And what, I've, what I want to do is show you some pretty common lighting situations. A lot of home offices where people are doing their Zooming have a window. In your particular case, you're wonderfully lit from the front. I don't know. Jennifer, is there a window in front of you? Is that, is that an artificial indoor light? Oh, I have three large windows in yeah. front of me and the blinds are open. Yeah. And, and look at the beautiful, even lighting on you. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, you look great. You look marvelous. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have my lights coming from the side. My window is on the sidewall, which creates this problem with a really high lighting ratio from one side of my face to the other. So if you have this kind of setup and you're not lit from the front, then you're going to need what's called a fill light. You're going to need some light on the shadowed side of your face. And I'm going to use my phone to show you a little bit about what it takes to get the fill light right. Okay. So I'm just turning my phone around here. So it's on my face. Now, this is the same idea that you just referred to when it comes to setting up your webcam height. It's, you've got to play around a bit to get things right. You'll notice here, as I move this fill light around, the shadows on my face are gonna change a little bit. The brightness of the light's gonna change. The closer the light is to my face, the brighter it's going to be. The farther, the softer it's going to be. If I move it up, you'll see the light, I'm sorry, the shadows from my glasses will change. Shadow from my nose will change if I go to the side here as opposed to toward the front. So the idea here is get an extra light to fill the darker side of your face. If you don't have any windows in your office, you may need two, two, art, two artificial light sources. And you can order desk lamps on Amazon that are actually made for podcasting. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Can you put your phone light right above your head? Because I'm noticing a lot of folks will have a light <laughs> above yeah. their head coming down and look at how it casts all those shadows. And it can sometimes just completely wash us out. Yeah, this is this is the real problem, particularly with people who don't have windows in their office. They'll use the ceiling lights and the ceiling lights, unfortunately, are directly above you and they create these deep, heavy shadows under your, your brow and, and that sort of stuff. It's sort of a monster -y kind of <laughs> look appropriate for Halloween. It looks like Halloween. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, that's a big common mistake. Okay. okay, so Scott, I think what I'm hearing then is that we don't want our light source behind us because that can be a distraction if the audience is having to look at light sources. Yeah, and, and it'll backlight you if you have a bright, you know, window behind you, unless you've covered it with some kind of shears or something to really, mm -hmm. really take down the amount of light that comes in, um, you're going to be backlit, which means you'll appear to be shadowed while your silhouette will show because of this bright light in the background, it's, it's uh, not flattering. It's not. And it's got another lighting issue that I notice quite often. It, it will be that window that's next to you however your camera is is bringing in that window you can actually see the window in this right. really bright light source so going back to get into a zoom room and start practicing yes with this lighting and take a look at is there are are there any lights or light sources that are a, a possible distraction for my audience whether it's the window or a lamp and play with that yeah. I also sometimes get a hot spot here on this picture back here reflected from a window. And I've done some pretty extreme things to stop that light from hitting it. I actually have some 
flip chart paper hanging in my window that's blocking the direct light from hitting that. The idea here is treat your space like a studio. All yeah. that matters is what comes into the camera. Everything else might look a little funky. I've got some sheet hanging in my window. I've actually put up a black blanket in part of the window as well to absorb some of the light. And I have a weird light fixture that's going to, I'm going to turn on in a second over to my left side. Um, it's all about control. And sometimes that means treating your space like a studio. All right. So let's, let's return my light to normal here. Here we go with the clapper. You're looking much better, Scott. I can Thank see you. you. That's Thank the you goal is to have that even lighting in our background and that we show up in even lighting. Okay. So with that, that's going to be our next episode. I can't wait. How do we create a background that reduces any distractions for our audience? And then also one of my favorite topics, how are we physically showing up? How are we putting ourselves together before we get on video? Two important topics. All right. So everybody tune in for our next episode on how to look good on Zoom. Thank you, everybody. Yes.